Good morning, an introduction to the third Sunday of Advent. God keeps the promise made to David to give him an everlasting throne. The angel tells Mary that God will give David's throne to her son, Jesus. She is perplexed by Gabriel's greeting and by the news of her coming pregnancy, but she is still able to say, count me in. We who know that Jesus is called King only as he is executed still find it a mystery hard to fathom. But with Mary today, we hear the news of what God is up to and say, count us in. Good morning and welcome to church on Sunday, December 20th, the third Sunday of Advent. A few announcements before we get going. Make sure that you get the email that we send out on a weekly basis because in that are going to be links for several things that you might be interested in joining us for, including communion at 1030 on Sunday, the 20th, communion at 5 o'clock on Christmas Eve, the 24th, and new thing that's happening. We're going to do Zoom Church on December 27th at 1030. So you will need the links to all of those things and other things that are happening um, throughout the parish. Um, so make sure you are reading that weekly email that we send out. Please add to your prayer list uh, this week the Shuey and Starforth families. Um, John and Helen Shuey um, and their daughter, Sarah, their son-in-law, Keel, and their grandsons, Lucas and Parker, are all positive for the COVID virus. And on Thursday morning, John was admitted to Shawnee Mission Medical Center um, to fight that virus off. Um, so please keep all of the Shuey and Starforth family in your prayers, as well as the other folks we have already mentioned and others that you have in your own hearts. So with that, um, I certainly hope you have a great week. I hope your holidays are safe and fabulous, and we'll see you as soon as we possibly can. If you need anything, please reach out. Thank you so much. 
Enjoy the service. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, whose forgiveness is sure and whose steadfast love endures forever. Together, let us honestly and humbly confess that we have not lived as God desires. Loving and forgiving God, we confess that we are held captive by sin. In spite of our best efforts, we have gone astray. We have not welcomed the stranger. We have not loved our neighbor. We have not been Christ to one another. Restore us, O God. Wake us up and turn us from our sin. Renew us each day in the light of Christ. Amen. People of God, hear this glad news. By God's endless grace, your sins are forgiven, and you are free, free from all that holds you back, and free to live in the peaceable realm of God. May you be strengthened in God's love, comforted by Christ's peace, and accompanied with the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us pray. Stir up your power, Lord Christ, and come. With your abundant grace and might, Free us from the sin that would obstruct your mercy, that willingly we may bear your redeeming love to all the world. For you live and reign with the Father and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. first lesson is from the seventh chapter of 2 Samuel. Now when the king was settled in his house, and the Lord had given him rest from all his enemies around him, the king said to the prophet Nathan, See now, I am living in a house of cedar, but the ark of God stays in a tent. Nathan said to the king, 
Go, do all that you have in mind, for the Lord is with you. But that same night the word of the Lord came to Nathan, Go and tell my servant David, Thus says the Lord, Are you the one to build me a house to live in? I have not lived in a house since the day I brought up the people of Israel from Egypt to this day. But I have been moving about in a tent and a tabernacle. Wherever I have moved about among all the people of Israel, did I ever speak a word with any of the tribal leaders of Israel, whom I commanded to shepherd my people Israel, saying, Why have you not built me a house of cedar? Now therefore, thus you shall say to my servant David, Thus says the Lord of hosts, I took you from the pasture, from following the sheep to be prince over my people Israel. And I have been with you wherever you went, and have cut off all your enemies from before you. And I will make for you a great name, like the name of the great ones of the earth. And I will appoint a place for my people Israel, and will plant them, so that they may live in their own place, and be disturbed no more. And evildoers shall afflict them no more as formerly. From the time that I appointed judges over my people Israel, and I will give you rest from all your enemies. Moreover, the Lord declares to you that the Lord will make you a house. Your house and your kingdom shall be made sure forever before me. Your throne shall be established forever. The word of the Lord. Today's psalm is from Luke 1. My soul proclaims the greatness of the Lord. My spirit rejoices in God my Savior. For you, Lord, have looked with favor on your lowly servant. From this day, all generations will call me blessed. You, the Almighty, have done great things for me, and holy is your name. You have mercy on those who fear you from generation to generation. You have shown strength with your arm and scattered the proud in their conceit, casting down the mighty from their thrones and lifting up the lowly. You have filled the hungry with good things and sent the rich away empty. You have come to the aid of your servant Israel to remember the promise of mercy, the promise made to our forebears, to Abraham and his children forever. The second reading is from the 16th chapter of Romans. Now to God, who is able to strengthen you according to my gospel and the proclamation of Jesus Christ, according to the revelation of the mystery that was kept secret for long ages, but is now disclosed, and through the prophetic writings is made known to all the Gentiles, according to the command of the eternal God, to bring about the obedience of faith, to the only wise God through Jesus Christ, to whom be the glory forever. Amen. The word of the Lord. Today's gospel is from the first chapter of Luke. In the sixth month, the angel Gabriel was sent by God to a town in Galilee called Nazareth, to a virgin engaged to a man whose name was Joseph of the house of David. The virgin's name was Mary, and he came to her and said, Greetings, favored one, the Lord is with you. 
but she was much perplexed by his words and pondered what sort of greeting this might be. The angel said to her, Do not be afraid, Mary, for you have found favor with God. And now you will conceive in your womb and bear a son, and you will name him Jesus. He will be great and will be called the Son of the Most High, and the Lord God will give to him the throne of his ancestor David. He will reign over the house of Jacob forever, and of his kingdom there will be no end. Mary said to the angel, How can this be, since I am a virgin? The angel said to her, The Holy Spirit will come upon you, and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. Therefore, the child to be born will be holy. He will be called Son of God. And now your relative Elizabeth in her old age has also conceived a son. And this is the sixth month for her, her who was said to be barren. For nothing will be impossible with God. Then Mary said, Here am I, the servant of the Lord. Let it be with me according to your word. Then the angel departed from her. The Gospel of the Lord. Let us pray. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of each heart be acceptable to you, O Lord, our strength and our Redeemer. Amen. I've got good news and I've got bad news, the old trope goes. Which one do you want to hear first? And the listener will ask for the bad news first to get it out of the way. After they've processed their disappointment and whatever they've heard, they ask, well, what's the good news? And that will inevitably turn out to be bad news as well. Our own national news for quite some time has seemed like that. Bad news on top of bad news. As the number of deaths and sicknesses has kept growing. I noticed this past week a change, though. With many of you... I watched as the first of the first responders received their vaccines. I heard finally of the election process being truly behind us. And on top of these two pieces of good news, there is, of course, the general hopefulness of this season, a season of giving and sharing, a season which we all need after the year that we've had. Thinking of good news and bad news reminds me of times when I have been the sharer of news, both good and bad. I remember standing on the porch of my home waiting for my mother to get home from work to tell her that her father had succumbed to his cancer. I remember sitting with my friends around a fire pit at seminary and calling my mother to tell her that we'd be expecting our first child. My friends said that they could hear her rejoicing through the phone six feet away. It's that kind of news we prefer to share, the good kind. To be a messenger of good news is a feeling like no other feeling. It's very much like giving a gift of the Spirit, an intangible gift. The book of Isaiah says, How beautiful on the mountains are the feet of those who bring good news who proclaim peace, who bring good tidings, who proclaim salvation and say to Zion, your God reigns. Why beautiful the feet? Because the feet were considered the least honorable part of a person, dragging in the dust as they always are. And so if even the feet of a messenger of good news are beautiful, it says a lot about the rest of him. Our scriptures tell us today that it was an angel named Gabriel, who was given the honor of bringing the good news. And we can't know what the internal life of an angel is like, but when we think about the best news we've ever been honored to bring, it causes us to wonder what it was like to speak these words to she who would be the mother of God. The Russian composer Chesnikov did such wondering, and his wondering led him to compose what I think is one of the most beautiful choral pieces of all time, the pre-eternal council. The English translation of which says, Gabriel stood before thee, O maiden, revealing the pre-eternal council, saluting thee and exclaiming, 
Rejoice, O earth unsown. Rejoice, O bush unburnt. Rejoice, O depth hard to fathom. Rejoice, O bridge leading to the heavens and lofty ladder which Jacob beheld. Rejoice, O divine jar of manna. Rejoice, annulment of the curse. Rejoice, restoration of Adam. The Lord is with thee. Another translation calls this piece the counsel before all ages, meaning that before all time began, it was in the heart of the Father that Mary would be all that Gabriel names her. Mary was always a part of God's plan of salvation. In this Annunciation, and until Jesus' birth, Mary is the whole church on earth. She answers the angel's announcement with her obedience, as we are called to do. The church is that space which is the product of God's graceful initiative and our obedience to that initiative. God being God would not need our participation in anything, much less salvation in the coming of the kingdom, but he allows us to be participants, allows us the dignity of listening to and obeying God's word, allows us the opportunity to, like Mary, say, behold, we are the servants of the Lord. And afterward, Mary becomes the bearer of Jesus. And so this is another picture of the church. As she bore Christ first into the world, so at its heart, that is what the church is called to do. Why does the church exist and continue? Of what benefit is the church? And if we answer these questions with things like to make people feel good or positive or to offer community or to entertain, 
to give people good moral examples, we quickly realize that if those are the reasons why the church exists, then there are other places that can do those things better. The church exists and continues in order to be the bearer of Jesus into the world through word and sacrament and faith. In the early church, there was a lot of discussion about the proper language to use of Mary and her son Jesus. One such discussion gave us a central figure in our celebration of this season. There was a bishop at the Council of Nicaea in the year 325 who was listening to a man named Arius defending his views that Jesus was a created being, lesser than the Father. Finally, the faithful gentleman could stand the noise of Arius' heresy no longer, and he strode across the room and slapped Arius across the face. Unfortunately, the Emperor Constantine was present, and it was against the law to do violence in his presence. The gentleman was stripped of his mitre and robes, he had his Bible taken from him, and he was thrown into a cell. That night, so the story goes, Mary, the mother of our Lord, appeared to him and asked him why he was in prison. And he responded, because of my love for you. Mary then gave him back his red vestments and his Bible, and so he was discovered in the morning by the guards, having been miraculously restored to his former honor. Our children would not care what side of that Christological controversy St. Nicholas was on as long as he keeps the gifts coming. But whatever did happen that night, the next day Arius' teaching was officially labeled as heretical and the Nicene Creed was written, in part so that the church would never fall into Arianism again, making it clear as it does by saying that Jesus was homoousius of one being with the Father. About a hundred years later, at the Council of Ephesus, there was a bishop of Constantinople named Nestorius, whose teaching tried to separate the divine nature of Christ from Christ's human nature. Jesus, according to Nestorius, was a regular human to whom God attached a divine nature later. The incarnation then was not very important to Nestorius, and neither was Mary. He refused her the title Theotokos, bearer of God and said that she should be called only the Christotokos, the bearer of Christ. And though Nestorianism, too, was found to be heretical, one can understand why one would have the instinct to keep the divine away from human life. Human life is messy. Human life is sinful. It is unseemly, from a certain perspective, offensive, to think of God being a flesh and blood man born in the normal way to a real mother. To think that at a certain point, God was nestled in Mary's womb. But that sacred reality is at the heart of our faith. God has chosen to draw so near, as close as blood and tears. God has chosen to give us such a part in salvation. So that just as Mary, one of our own, carried Christ in her own body, we too might carry him in faith, ever aware of the sacred gift of God's closeness. A couple of years ago, I was moving some books back to the church's library, and the preschool children were in a line going out to play, and I waved at them, as I'm in the habit of doing. And one of them who was being picked up early by his father, excitedly tapped his father on the knee and then pointed to me and said, Look, Dad, that's God. The boy had obviously been taught enough to know that the church is God's house, and since at least sometimes, though not often, I seem to be in charge, he had made the inference that I must be he. We had a good laugh about it, but when I thought about it later, I wondered what life must be like for that little boy who believed as he went about his learning and his playing that God was always just in the next room, that he could glimpse him in his coming and going, that God was always near and busy keeping the house in order. 
And then I understood for the first time Matthew 18, 3, where Jesus said we must change and become like little children. And at that moment and ever since, I have longed for faith like that little boy had. This season invites us into that kind of faith, into the reminder that God is near. I've got good news, and I've got good news. Which do you want to hear first? The good news is that long ago, an angel told Mary the plan of salvation which was made before the ages began, and that she gave her amen to God's will and humble obedience. And the good news is that when we follow Mary's example and listen to God's word and are obedient to it, we too become bearers of Christ through faith to the glory and honor of God the Father. May you have the faith of a little child in these holy days and know indeed that the Lord is near. Amen. Now let us confess our faith using the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is, seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, Light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, was incarnate of the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and became truly human. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again, in accordance with the Scriptures, He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church, We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. God of power and might, fulfill your promise and come quickly to this weary world. Hear our prayers for everyone in need. Gracious God, all generations call you blessed. In this holy season, we pray for our neighbors of other denominations, and other faiths. Inspire the faith of their people, cultivate understanding among us, and strengthen us in love and in service to our community. Hear us, O God, your mercy is great. Creator God, you scatter the proud. Everything we have belongs first to you. Bless and protect the seas, mountains, plains, forests, and soils that surround us. Give us humility as we tend them. Hear us, O God, your mercy is great. Righteous God, you humble the powerful and lift up the lowly. We pray for the leaders of all nations, that they amplify the voices of people in need. Guide all people entrusted with leadership to create societies in which everyone can flourish. Hear us, O God, your mercy is great. Compassionate God, you fill the hungry with good things and send the rich away empty. Nourish those who lack access to adequate food. Bless the work of advocates, community organizers, and food pantries. Encourage others to provide for their neighbors in need. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. Healing God, you pour out mercy to all who cry out to you. Surround everyone in need of healing, in body, mind, or spirit, with your tender presence, especially those we now name aloud or in our hearts. Hear us, O God, your mercy is great. Eternal God, you are faithful to the promises you made to our forebears. We give thanks for the ministry of Katerina von Bora, Luther, and other ancestors who organized, planned, dreamed, and encouraged, and reached out as they served you. 
We give thanks for the bold leadership of female leaders in our own time. Inspire others with their steadfast witness. Hear us, O God, your mercy is great. Draw near to us, O God, and receive our prayers for the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. As we enjoy some music, please remember your support of First Lutheran Church, either by giving by text message, signing up for online giving, or sending your gift into the church office. And as always, your gift is greatly appreciated. Now let us pray using the words our Savior taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. The creator of the stars, bless your advent waiting. The long-expected Savior, fill you with love. The unexpected Spirit, guide your journey, now and forever. Go in peace, prepare the way of the Lord. Thanks be to God.